know, as I reflect on this year, it has been a tremendous uh, undertaking to direct a statewide project to try to understand the issues, concerns, and cares of people of African ancestry related to mental issues. It's a very serious, very serious topic and many of our people have not been accustomed to expressing those things that are inside of them. So this project has given them an opportunity to share their voices, to open up, and to seek for a better understanding of how to deal with some of those things that are plaguing them, that they do not feel comfortable with, and uh, oftentimes do not know where to go to find resources. This is not the time for anything less than the best treatment utilizations of community service providers that are outside of the network. They have to be utilized, they have to be integrated, you have to actually meet the needs of meeting your brother or sister in a better, more friendly, a caring, a compassionate manner because it should be a situation where it's not a handout but a hand up. And it has to be tailor made because the current planning is not really sufficient to actually meet the needs of a community that has bleeding hearts, many bleeding hearts. And what I found out there are so many individuals that go into the system that have been into the system for multi-generational one, two, three generations. This is something I want looked at because how do you rehabilitate a community that has already been almost defeated? They have empirical data that individuals in the system could lose 20 years of their life. How do you regain that time frame from going in seeking help from an organization that has the bone structure of being the place to go but the inner structure is still missing items and services that were, de that were designated from the New Freedom Commissions Act in 1996, from 94 to 96. And my biggest concern is when consumers are at the point of now going out to do better in their life, they're attached to the Department of Rehabilitation. There's been no study on how that's devastating consumers. It's not a cookie cutter situation, but a lot of consumers I have found out have actually been sent back into a form of trauma and they're having to live their life traumatized by in the system because they don't really have the ancillary providers to provide them services in a timely and a reasonable manner. So I'm hoping that new services that are comparable to African Americans' well-being from a generational standpoint that can be developed and implemented. It is important to acknowledge the California Department of Mental Health and Proposition 63 funding uh, with the Mental Health Service Act. Those monies have been used to create the Reducing Disparities Projects, as which we have said before is among ethnic, minor, uh, ethnic populations. So we have the La uh, Latinos, the Native Americans, Asian Pacific Islanders, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, not just only ethnic populations, but cultural populations and the African American uh, uh, population. Secondly, with having this meeting today, it was a collaborative effort with the California Institute of Mental Health. They were able to sponsor our community people coming from all over the state and paying for their logic and their, um, uh, their travel expenses. And then thirdly, we had another collaborative partner on track uh, with, um, with, uh, in, in Sacramento. They are an advocacy education resource arm. They, will also be able, they were able to support uh, portions of the lodging and the registration for the participants to be here. So it takes a collective effort for us to be able to move forward and more importantly I want to appreciate all of the individuals who came from every corner of the state who took their time and their energy and their dedication for two days and for some two and a half days to travel and to participate actively in helping to craft solutions that will really work for our people throughout the state of California. We want to have good mental health. We want to have healthy families. We want to be able to network and integrate together. So we have a website, the African American Health Institute, AAAHI-SBC.
dot org. That's A like an apple, A like an apple, H like an Harry, I like an Iris, dash, Sam Ball Charlie dot org. 909-880-2600. So you go to our website, you can see a, a, a gamut of resources and materials. So we thank you for the opportunity to be able to share this information. We look forward to networking together and to moving forward to create a system in the state of California that will truly provide the service delivery and prevention and early intervention for all people that's appropriate for them and that is responsive to their particular needs. Did you forget where you were? Uh, support groups. We were talking about support groups and you had asked how how best would this new Mental Health Services Act um, be helpful. I think with the families. I think the families really need to are need to be and are an integral part in the recovery. My daughter developed bipolar disorder when she was 13 and she is now 24. And um, we've got her at a point now where she's semi-independent. Um, she's uh, in a program through a group called Step Up on Second and she's now living in a group home which is her first experience with the group home. They use the uh, Project Return uh, peer support methodology and it's really working for her. Um, I think that in conjunction with the families and then of course the doctors and the uh, medications and other treatment options uh, make a well-rounded person and a recovered person. How much information did you gather? Well, uh, well, yes, we gathered uh, focus groups. We had 35 focus groups throughout the state, and we had like 270, uh, 260 individuals to participate in the focus group. We had uh, 10 or uh, nine, ten, nine or 10 public meetings, um, and we had um, 43 in-depth interviews. We were we administered uh, 625 surveys, and we had a total of about uh, 1,195 individuals who actually gave information. We ended up with 274 statewide recommendations that were actually practices, strategies, and system changes. And when you look at systems changes, right now uh, the California uh, Department of Mental Health is being uh, dismantled and the governor has a major restructure in place. And so we have made recommendations that funds, of course, need to come directly from uh, the uh, state budget to the communities so that community individuals and and uh, organizations, community-based organizations that are black-led would be able to continue to work with their uh, population. That's important, Blaze. It's important to know that the money comes directly to them. So we're trying to create a system and a, and a, and a network to be able to make that happen. Are you suggesting that there's hope? There is hope, and we never give up. And we thank the Lord for the opportunity to be able to serve and for um, to live in this day and age of excitement, of change. There's a lot of change that's going on, and we have people that are committed to making significant change. That's important. It's hard, though. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you meet a house by yourself and start crying. And sometimes I feel like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to tell him that because mm -hmm. you don't know, know how he react mm -hmm. towards you. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at me different though, they really do. Hopefully, in the next 10 years as I look into the future, we should have less visits to the emergency room where people come in in crisis. We should have less long-term stay in medical facilities as well as uh, mental health facilities. We should have less children being taken to detention and less children on, on medications that are not intended for long-term therapy, psychotropic drugs that really should be given with caution to adults. We should have a thriving California where people are quantum leaps above the current status quo. Less depression, less suicide, less loneliness.
we should have a society where people are productive and feeling their optimal best. That's what I'm hoping in the next five years and ten years. And you've mentioned several times that throughout your experience in life, people have disrespected you unnecessarily just by looking at you. Uh, how do you deal with that? Well, how do I deal with them? Look at them, keep smiling, God bless you, keep on stepping. I'm going to end with that. That's powerful. Okay, bye. Thank you.